You know, if I do win, right, and I beat you, I'll give you my, this recipe. <laughs> <laughs> you give me the, the oh, well, I'll recipe. give you the recipe of a wealth <laughs> In fact, Angela didn't just rely on her auntie's recipe. To ensure that she had the truly authentic taste, she put in some serious research. She ended up at Lower Haythog Farm, a bed and breakfast in Haverford West, where Nesta Thomas's Welsh cakes attract visitors from far and wide. Is this recipe one handed down from generation to generation, or is this well, it's adaptation? Well, it is adaptation of generations. Right, OK. Um, and each time you make them, they're never the same, because you and can't remember very... what you did the last time. Anyway, that's the wealth <laughs> for you, isn't it? But it's very much every every sort of Welsh house. My aunt's got a recipe. Both my aunts have different recipes for it. Oh, right. Yeah, one. they um, don't put spices in. They keep it very, um, you know, simple yes, as it is. No yes. spices. Brilliant. OK. But can Angela make Welsh cake that's good enough to satisfy Nesta's husband, Bill? How do your sort of visitors, like the English, do they sort of understand these sort of cakes? I mean, this is probably the equivalent of what Scots have as shortbread, the English have as scones now. It's their sort they of form of yes. hospitality, no? Yes, it, it's a form of Welsh hospitality. And how um, thick? How about thick? About half an inch thick. Half an inch, okay. <clears throat> yes. You see, the thing is, we don't want a biscuit and we don't want a scone. <laughs> So, do we know the origin of Welsh cakes? No, I don't like know that. the origin yeah. of it uh, as regards when it all came about. But I would imagine a long time ago, because all our ingredients, remember, are very basic. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. Today's it's very world. simple cooking. It's very yeah. simple cooking, and that indicates it's very old, I would think. That's true, that's a good In its sign. traditions, really. That's right. OK. Right. So, ne next stage. Shall we try them onto the um, agar? The Welsh cakes don't so much cook as heat up on the bake stone for a couple of minutes. Then it's time for the all-important taste test. OK, Bill, Welsh cakes and tea. Oh, jolly good idea. That's a cracking idea. Angela's version now, all right, for Is you to right? sample. For you to sample. Tell me what you really think. Go on then, Bill, let's see. Try this out. First time she's made them, mind. Mm, very good. They're very good, you, honestly? I do think they are, first class. Better than Nesta's? Well, it's coming near it anyway. So I've learnt good little tips from you there, Nesta. That's going to be great. Good. Thank you. No, even though I say so much, they're delicious. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. And I can vouch for that. Back in London, I get the chance to taste them too, and they're fantastic. Oh, it's very that. nice. It's absolutely magnificent, to tell you the yeah. truth. Start worrying, start worrying, boy. I think our Welsh cakes are going to give you a run for your money, young man. If they're like my nan's Welsh cakes, I'm in big trouble. Yeah. <laughs> But Bryn has a tried and tested family recipe of his own for the dessert course. One of my, my firm memories is my father cooking um, what we call toast ui in Welsh, it's called eggy bread, which is using old stale bread, soaking it in milk and a little bit of egg and pan frying it. It's French toast, but which one came first? We can, you know, we can argue all day, really, but I say the Welsh one. But the loaf he's using for the Queen isn't just any old stale bread. My personal opinion, Bala Brief, which is a Welsh, it's not a fruit cake, it's a fruit loaf, would have to stand on top of the tree for the out and out Welsh ingredients. It's been around for years and years and years. Every time I go back now and I eat it, it reminds me of about 10, 12 years of age. Mm -hmm. 